Hello and welcome to our introduction to our CAST conferencing guides and composition rubrics. I'm Kelly Philbeck and I'm an academic program consultant in the Office of Teaching and Learning in the Division of Program Standards. And if you should have any questions about our conferencing guides or our composition rubrics for grades 6 through 12, please feel free to reach out and contact me at kelly.philbeck at education.ky.gov or you may also reach me at elateam at education.ky.gov. To start us off today, we're going to navigate to our composition rubrics and our conferencing guides, and we're going to go to www.kystandards.org. When you go to kystandards.org, one of the first things you want to make sure that you have done is register for our weekly newsletter updates. And so in the top left hand corner of your screen, you will see a plus sign. If you click on that plus sign, you just need to enter your name and your school email address and that will get you signed up for our newsletters and updates that will let you know about new resources and announcements um, for our kystandards.org website. And so when you get to kystandards.org um, to find our conferencing guides and our composition rubrics, you're going to click on your standards resources. Once you click on standards resources, you're going to come to a page that has a list of all of the different content area resources. And for reading and writing, you always want to look for the red icons. And so you're going to click on that button that says reading and writing resources. Once you click there, it's going to bring you to a page and in the top left hand corner are our composition resources. So if you just click on that red icon, it will take you straight to our composition resources where you will find our conferencing guides and our composition rubrics. And so we're going to start today with looking at our conferencing guides. And the reason why we want to start looking at the conferencing guides is because writing is really focused on growing our student writers. And so our conferencing guides really promote the conversation around growth as a writer. And so you don't want to just start with the rubrics because you're looking more at scoring with a rubric. And so it's much more important to start with our student writers you know, having conversations with them and talking about the strengths in their writing and what can they do um, to improve some different areas in their writing where they might be struggling. So you definitely want to start with the conferencing guides. And so when we think about feedback and conferencing with student writers. I always think about NCTE's understanding and teaching writing and that principle 3.1 where writers grow within a context, a culture and a community of feedback. And so our conferencing guides are built around this principle of giving students feedback and having those conversations that promote growth and strengthening of our student writers. And so our conferencing guides are intended for use in the formative stages of the writing process. They are great tools that you can use for self reflection, for peer conferencing and also for teacher conferences. And so this is just a look of, at our conferencing guides. Um, I know it's small for the screen, but I just want to give you sort of a visual rec recognition. So when you do look at the website, you'll know that that's what our conferencing guides look at. But we're going to go ahead later in the presentation and look at um, sp some specific elements in the conferencing guides. But this is just sort of a visual reference to let you know um, that you found the correct documents. And so in our composition elements um, on our conferencing guides down the left hand column, you're going to see different composition elements such as clarity and coherence. Um, for argument, you're going to see a category for counterclaims. All of them are going to have a support category. Um, sourcing for argument and informative writing, um, organization and language and conventions. And so just a few tips for using the conferencing guides. Like I said before, you want to start with these first before the rubrics because the conferencing guides are really designed 
to be used as a formative component of the writing process. So they are for feedback. They are not for a score. And we don't want to start with just scoring student writing before we've had a chance to talk to students and let students have peer conferences and we'll give them an opportunity for revision. And so we want to make sure that the conferencing guides are what you're using first. You'll notice when you look at the conferencing guides that they're built on a prem the premise of a single point rubric. And so pretty much what they do is they take the grade level standard and they take those standards descriptors and the conferencing guides, they're based on just that grade level proficiency. And so when you look at those, there's a column um, that has the where am I now? And those are the proficiency descriptors from our grade level standards. And so they're a great point to where you can start conversations with students. And so with the conferencing guides, um, we also encourage you to use these first because they get students um, and they give students an opportunity to get accustomed to that rubric language. And so when you first look at the rubrics, they are aligned to our grade level standards language. And so it can be overwhelming when you see all four of those scoring categories on a page and all of the different scoring elements. And so the conferencing guides are just a place to get students used to the different elements of composition um, and also to look at those scoring descriptors, just seeing what the goal is for that particular grade level's proficiency. When you look at the conferencing guides, they also offer students opportunities for actionable feedback. So it's not just, you know, telling them what they're scoring and where they are, but it's also having those conversations and giving them some ideas of some resources or some tools that they can use to help improve their writing. The conferencing guides provide next steps to strengthen composition. They also give students tangible actions for revision, and we're going to take a look at some of those and what a conferencing guide might look like if it's filled out for your students. You'll also notice that the conferencing guides are published in Word, and that is to allow teachers to adapt those guides and maybe isolate composition elements for an explicit focus in the conferences. And what I mean by that is when you look at all of the different composition elements that we talked about before, so you look at support and sourcing and organization, um, language and conventions, if you tried to conference on all of those different composition elements with a student, that could also be overwhelming. And so these conferencing guides, even though we did put all of the composition elements on the guides where you have access to them, they are published in Word. And so if I wanted to really isolate support with a student and talk to them about just that category and just that conferencing composition element of support, I could isolate that um, and just have that conference really looking at that one, the descriptors in that one composition element. And so when you look at the conferencing guides, know they're designed for that particular function. Uh, we put all of the composition elements on the page, but it's with the intent that you're able to pick and select that just right area to conference with a student writer to help them grow and help them learn about writing and how they can strengthen their compositions. And so here's an example of what I was talking about. Um, you could look at the composition, for example, with counterclaims. And so the student is coming to you with a piece of writing or they're coming to a peer conference with that piece of writing. And so that first column is where am I now? And it has the language of that grade level proficiency. And so if you were highlighting uh, where the student is now and if the you know, green highlight um, indicates mastery or indicates proficiency. And then the, maybe the yellow areas are places that the student still needs some work or still needs some growth. 
then you could, you know, highlight those different descriptors. You can see that first bullet is broken, kind of a jagged um, highlight. So you've got part of that bullet is green. So the student acknowledges and distinguishes an opposing claim. But maybe they're still having some struggles with the part that says with insight, interpretation or clarification. And maybe they acknowledge and distinguish that claim. And so that is highlighted in green, but they're struggling some, or maybe it's just not as strong where they counter and refute that opposing claim. And so our conferencing guides also give you that flexibility where you are able to um, you color code and use different colors of highlighters to sort of create that feedback system um, within your classroom. And so the second column then looks at where am I going? So it looks at areas for growth. And just as an example, um, you know, I could put, you know, for my students, strong evidence of acknowledging opposing claims. And so tell them what they're doing well. I could even give them an example um, from their piece of writing, or I could even annotate on the piece itself where I'm seeing those, um, that strong evidence of acknowledging opposing claims. But then I also want to tell them, you know, some areas where they could grow. So what are some things they could work on? And so for an example, you know, work on strengthening your argument by showing what people who disagree with you think and then prove them wrong. And so just adding that component of countering and refuting will strengthen that argument. And then we want to make sure that, you know, even though I've given feedback in that second column, Lots of times when students leave a conference, you know, you've told them to, you know, add more evidence or be more specific or try to strengthen your argument, but you also have to show them how. And so that last column um, gives you an opportunity to really look at and let the student look at, you know, how am I going to get there? And so that last column provides strategies or resources needed to strengthen the composition. And so um, just an example might be, you know, if you were using a writer's workshop, then students might go back and, you know, reference some things that you have used previously in your instruction. And so I always used writer's craft charts and we use mentor text. And so I might recommend to my students, you know, go back and look at those writer's craft charts and our mentor text and see how the professional writers work that we analyzed. How did they handle counterclaims? And then, you know, model that counterclaim structure in that professional writer's argument. And then I might give them some specific tools. And so, you know, if we had used some strategies from they say, I say, if we had used some tra transitions and some sentence starters, then those might be some specific areas where, you know, students could go back. They know exactly what to look at. They know, um, the familiarity that they have with those resources because we've used those instructionally throughout the process, but they just need to go back and have a little more focus on those particular areas. And so by referencing those specific resources to go back, it lets them go into writer's workshop or lets them go into peer conferencing, knowing what they need to do and knowing the resources that they need to explore to help them uh, individually strengthen their own writing. And so just another example, and um, this example is with support. And so again, I've used the color code, um, co color coding and highlighting. And so something the student's doing well, I might put as a green, you know, that one's a go, um, that they support their claim with logical reasons and relevant evidence. So that where am I now when they come to a conference? I'm looking at their piece of work and I'm showing and indicating that evidence of their meeting or exceeding the standards. But even though they may support their claims, and that's highlighted in green, we do have a section that's in yellow. So it provides logical explanations of evidence and ideas, provides reasoning that clearly links evidence to support the claims. And so again, you can see in the middle column where I've given them some feedback um, that, you know, their logical reasons, relevant evidence, evidence, you know, those are used throughout the entire piece. But to push that argument to the next level, 
be sure to thoroughly connect and explain how your evidence links to your claims. Go back and use our exemplars that we used um, with says means matter. So I'm pulling out some instruction that I used with them. They're able to go back to their writer's notebook and find that particular organizer that we used. Um, also referring them back to writer's craft and those writer's craft sheets in their writer's notebook. And then the how am I going to get there with specific strategies and resources to strengthen that composition. Um, I just tell them, you know, look at your writer's notebook for examples of how to um, write a claim. So look at those models. Look at that claim. How do professional writers handle that claim, the evidence and reasoning and how do they structure that? And then also the writer's craft, the evidence work that we did, and also um, looking in the writer's notebooks for the says means matters work. And so that's giving, again, students specific resources to call back upon to be able to go through and see those mentor texts, to see work that we did throughout the instructional process to help them strengthen their own writing. And so you can see I picked two areas. So I am not looking at every composition element on that conferencing guide. I'm just isolating these two where I feel like this student um, really needs the most work or also what's going to push them forward. So what are those priority levels and priority areas? And so you want to think about that with the conferencing guide. Don't try to do everything, but when you look at student work, just really think about what are those pivotal areas or pivotal composition elements for students where they could do some work and it would really help promote their growth as a writer. Now, once you're ready um, to score the writing, then you have your composition rubrics. And so we talked about the conferencing guides being used more in that formative process. You can also use your composition rubrics. Once students are really familiar with the scoring elements and the grade level descriptors for those scoring elements, then you can move on to the composition rubrics and you can also use these as a formative process if you really want to look at you know scoring and how to move students forward the, co the composition rubrics can be used formatively but then they can also be used summatively for that final draft of writing And so again, calling upon NCTE's understanding teaching and writing, principle 3.3 says that assessment should be transparent and contextual, and it should provide opportunities for writers to take risk and to grow. And so as you're using the rubrics, make sure you're not just using them as that summative assessment. They can also be used in that formative process after you use the conferencing guides and the writing has gone through draft stages where it's more at the stage where it's ready for a score. So the composition rubrics, like I said, they definitely they may be used in the summative or in the formative assessment process. When you're scoring student work, also know that most student work is not going to fall consistently in one category. And so when we're scoring, I think we all know as writing teachers that scoring can very frequently you know, be messy. And so if you are highlighting different descriptors on those rubrics, you may have some descriptors that fall in apprentice. You may have some that fall in proficient and the same student may have um, some descriptors maybe that are even distinguished or novice and so know that that jagged scoring you know is something that you definitely may see but then it also points you to specific areas for growth for that student writer and so it's just important to know that absolutely a student probably is not just going to fall straight down one scoring category but also use that as potential um, to really highlight what that student is doing well and then also to show some areas where that student can grow. And then as you're using the rubrics, um, know that 
it's a good indicator to also tell students, you know, if they are maybe right in between that apprentice and proficient, you can go with just some high low scoring descriptors. You know, maybe once you come up with that final score um, indicating that they are high apprentice, that they're almost in that proficient category or maybe they're even low proficient. And so use those rubrics with some flexibility to really promote student growth, just like you did with the conferencing guides. And so this is just a look at the rubric. And so you can see that you have your scoring elements and those are those same composition elements, only we're calling them scoring elements in the rubric because they are the categories that you're using to score the piece. And then you have four scoring categories. Um, so you have novice, apprentice, proficient, and distinguished. As you're looking across the scoring categories, um, there are a few descriptors that sort of are repeated um, in describing what you may be seeing in the student work. And so with novice, you're going to see the words minimal, few, or lax. You'll see those repeated throughout that novice column. With apprentice, you're going to see attempts, but also lapses. And so they are attempting to meet this standard. You see where they're on the right track, but there may be some points where there are some lapses. With proficient, um, you're going to see the words logical and effective. And with distinguished, you're going to see skillfully, thoughtfully, and consistently. Our scoring elements, like we mentioned before, um, are the same as what you saw in the conferencing guides. And so you have clarity and coherence, counterclaims for argument, support, sourcing and argument and informative writing, organization, and then language and conventions. And we wanted to provide you, um, even though the scoring guides and the rubrics do give you some descriptors um, for each of the scoring elements, we wanted to give you some broad definitions too, so you could see um, exactly what we're meaning by these different scoring elements or composition elements. And so these are in this presentation, but there is also a document, um, just a one pager with these posted um, with these descriptors on there as well. And so um, we're sorry, scoring categories on there as well. So with clarity and coherence, um, clarity is really looking at how the writer establishes a controlling idea and focuses on the prompt or task throughout the composition. And then coherence is looking at how the writer links ideas, paragraphs, sentences, and words to create a smooth flow of information and thoughts for the reader. And so both clarity and coherence, they require the writer to anticipate the needs of the audience and adhere to the norms of the mode of writing identified in the prompt or task. All thoughts and all ideas should be focused toward achieving the goal of the prompt or task. With counterclaims, <clears throat> we're looking at how the writer acknowledges opposing arguments, making claims to offset and rebut opposing claims. It's essential for the writer to anticipate and negate opposing arguments to create counterclaims. Now, one thing you're gonna see if you are a sixth grade teacher um, we went ahead and left in the element of counterclaims for sixth grade, just simply because um, counterclaims in sixth, sixth grade sort of builds that foundational piece for counterclaims because sixth grade students are expected to begin acknowledging opposing claims as a foundational piece of that counterclaim. And so we thought that it was really important to leave that element in for sixth grade as well, but just know that it's there, even though it's not a formal counterclaim like we see um, coming into seventh grade, that um, the acknowledgement of those opposing claims is really important to building to that counterclaim. So we didn't want to leave that particular scoring element or composition element off of these documents for sixth grade. With support, we're looking at how the writer develops all the components of the prompt or task with evidence, reasoning, details, and or descriptions, depending on the mode of writing. 
with sourcing. Uh, we're looking at how the writer cites quotes and or paraphrases evidence or ideas from the provided or researched text. And so know, know that sometimes um, as a teacher or the prompt itself may be providing those texts, but then also we wanted the flexibility for sourcing in there because research is such an important component of secondary literacy. With the scoring element of organization, we're looking at how the writer builds an overall structure for the composition by sequencing ideas, evidence, details, and or descriptions to communicate and make sense to the reader. And then finally, language and conventions. Language is looking at how the writer uses appropriate word choice to enhance the composition by creating and adhering to a task appropriate tone voice and writing style. And then conventions, we're looking at how the writer uses standard English grammar, usage, spelling, capitalization, and punctuation to communicate. And so that's just a brief introduction to our conferencing guides and our composition rubrics. Uh, you'll be able to find all of those on our composition resources page, but I also want to uh, point you to some instructional support for the three modes of writing that came out earlier this year. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to explore our composition in the classroom document, we are extremely excited about this and it will give you that instructional support for the three modes of writing. Um, and it was designed by Kentucky educators. And so they came together last summer and put together this document um, to really provide some quality instructional support and also instructional ideas and resources that you can use um, as you're teaching the three modes of writing. So I highly recommend that in conjunction with the conferencing guides and composition rubrics, that you definitely spend some time in this composition in the classroom document. So again, I am Kelly Philbeck. If you have any questions, just please feel, reach, feel free to reach out to me. It's Kelly Philbeck at education.ky.gov and I will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with your student writers.